the laws, the bylaws of that government. So we have a Constitution of the United States of America. And that Constitution is what that whole government is based upon. The Kingdom of Heaven has a Constitution. That Constitution is what, not Kingdom of God, Kingdom of Heaven. And we'll talk about some of the differences. It's the same Holy Ghost. There's not another Holy Ghost. There's not another Spirit. There's another, no Spirit begat another Spirit. I need to tell you that uh, Brother Sandy Hammonds uh, told that doctor, is there any other way? And he says, we got one chance, and that's to go in there with needles, lance the, the, uh, the abscess in the colon that was enlarged with the infection, drain it, and with massive antibiotics, hopefully that it will decrease and clear up. If it doesn't, then we have no other option. Well, the good news is, Sandy Emmons believed God. Sister Holly believed God. Y'all, you believe God. And last night, Brother Emmons said, God, according to your will, whatever it is you reveal to me, I will do it. The surgery went perfectly well. They found it. They said they couldn't guarantee it would. It went perfectly well. It lanced it. There's a little pocket on the side. Sister Holly said, you got a weak stone? I said, nope. Seen them dead on the side of the road. Took a look at it, and it's draining. Everything looks great. So keep praying. If everything goes well, he will be out of the MIT, the ICU tomorrow into a room. And when Brother Sammy Evans will be back with us here in church. Somebody said, well, if you're a believer, why do these things happen? Why are there deaths? Why are there obstacles? Why are there trouble and tribulation? Why, why, why? And the reason for that is that the more you go through and the higher your call is, the greater the sufferings you're going to have. Now, if you want to go to a Rudy Tutti Fresh and Fruity Church in blessings, well, then you have a crossless Christianity. There's no cross there. Paul exhorting the disciples that through much tribulation should they enter into the kingdom of God. Now, that's not the kingdom of heaven. That's the kingdom of God. Through what? Through much tribulation. What's tribulation? Trouble. In the Old Testament, it is a Hebrew word called ra. R-A-H, which means trouble, tribulation. Shall there be evil in the city, and I, the Lord God, hath not done it. Who's the city? Who's the Mount Zion? Who's the heavenly Jerusalem? The church and assembly of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. Shall there be evil in the city, and I, the Lord God, hath not done it. So we're going to talk about, in other words, you, we are members of the body of Christ. We are the Mount Zion. Amen. We are the city of the living God. We are that church. We are that, that uh, light of the world, a city set upon a hill that cannot be hid. Shall there be evil in the city? And I, the Lord God, have not done it. So everything that happens in your life, this, the obstacles that we do, the tribulation, the persecutions, and all of this other, is simply man born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. Full of it. Matthew 6, 30, Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these other things be added to you. In the world you will have tribulation, trouble. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. God is dealing very severely, and I mean severely, with the body right now, the body of Christ. Uh, my son, one, Brother Sam Eames, another. Uh, there's a Brother Gary Tyler, a 42-year-old man, telling him God's stirring your nest, going to stir your nest. 
I told it to my wife when we left, told him. And, um, and next time we went over there two weeks later on a Friday to see him, 42-year-old man just had a stroke. <laughs> he lived. And uh, then I went back over there the other day and saw him again. And he said, uh, I can't tell you the trouble that I'm going through now. He said, it's almost unbearable. Uh, there's a reason why. The uh, brother Sammy Emmons was in so much pain last night that he was having tremors in his stomach and abdomen about every 15 to 20 seconds that he would have, uh, that it would literally shake him there with that, uh, that amount of poison in his system and that abdomen and that abscess. Now, he is just resting, not moving. He's doing great. God is on the throne. He's in uh, Mother Francis, room 125, if you want to see him, uh, in the intensive care unit 125. They will be moving him out. I believe God. Uh, we all believe God, our faith together. They will be moving to a, a regular room tomorrow. Uh, it's all, he's out of the woods now. Everything's up on the upswing, and they put him in a room. Uh, the, they're not saying when they're going to release him because it's, it had gone to a very bad infection uh, to a point where a man can't even walk. He, Brother Sammy had pushed it to the, to the nth degree. He couldn't go any further. So, uh, But sometimes we men, you know, man's a man. And I thought him and that little old nurse, that male nurse of his, going to get sideways last night. That little, he come in there, and there he is in pain, and every 15, 20 seconds, he's having spasms in that, or, that colon. Well, spasms there, and I mean, he, and you, it's like, to give you an idea, we're grown-ups here, and well, a few children. And have you ever felt like that you had to believe yourself and you can't because it's too swollen, you can't do it. You can't even, not, not through uh, the rugged relief, but even in gas, nothing. It is tremendous pain. And that's what he's going through. Well, the nurse came in, the little male nurse, and uh, said, he needs something for pain. Well, I can't give him anything. And I says, well, if you're hurting, you need to tell me. Now, Brother Sammy says, man, I am hurting. Do you think I want to be here? He says, if I was 23 years old, I'd yank this thing out of my arm and walk out. Now, this thing's going to get south here. And he said, well, I don't know unless you tell me. I said, uh, I He's telling you, says Holly said, he's telling you, said, I'm telling you that this is excruciating pain. I'm not here because I want to be here. So the man went and got him a little shot of morphine directly into his arm to get, and it still didn't stop the spasms. But he, when he said, uh, I can't, I don't know, I can't read your mind if you don't let me know you're in pain. Uh, what do you think a man squirming there He's getting, getting hit in every 15 seconds with spasms. He can't stand still in a bed. He's not in pain. You can't see that. So in other words, a lot of these so-called doctors, I understand that, and these nurses, have, they, they position themselves and put a, a wall, a barrier there. I understand that. and don't want to get close to anybody. But... Uh, you need to help the person if you can. I, he, was, he was able to give him shots and anything for pain that he needed. But he wasn't doing it. Anyway, I thought uh, Brother, Brother Sammy was going to give him a lesson in, in uh, nursing there for a minute.
God is working his will. We can't work it. Only God can work it. No man can do God's will. God works it through you. You can't do it. You have to be obedient. It's the Lord that works. It's the Lord that works. No man does it. It's not me, but Christ in me, Paul said. I labored more than the all, yet not I, but Christ that was with me. It's God that worketh in you, both the will and the do of his good pleasure. When we take a look at the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, and what is the difference? In uh, Matthew 5, 6, and 7, what you have, and we've all been taught, of the Beatitudes, blessed, blessed this and blessed that. The Beatitudes literally, and we'll begin reading in chapter 5. And this, Matthew 5, 6, 7, these three chapters will literally entail the constitution or the bylaws of the kingdom of heaven. We will see that there's no repentance and baptism in the name of Jesus Christ receiving the Holy Ghost. There will be nothing about uh, talking in tongues and the gifts of the Spirit. This is all fruit. All fruit. The fruit harvest. Tabernacle. Sevens. Completion. Now when they call it the Feast of Sevens, Everything in the book of Revelation is seven. Seven spirits for the throne of God, seven seals, seven trumpets, seven vows, the seven stars. Those are the Pleiades mentioned over in Job of the Maseroth. The Maseroth is a Zoad, the ladder in heaven. So whenever that ladder came down and you see angels ascending and descending upon that, that means that all the seasons of God were manifest in Jesus alone. Let me say that again. When you see angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man, ascending and descending, that means that all of those feasts of the Lord are manifest in that one man, Christ Jesus. When Jacob saw Jacob's ladder, I mean, how many have remember Jacob's ladder? Jacob's ladder, okay. That ladder is a zoad. It is a ladder. It is the step to heaven. And, uh, but it's not only one way. It's angels ascending and descending there. So when Jesus is baptized of John and Jordan, what happens to the heavens? They're opened. Why? That's a priesthood, isn't it? He, f he fulfills his priesthood under the law at age 30. He's the apostle and high priest of profession of our faith. He's a high priest under the Levitical law, under Aaron, the Aaronic priesthood, Levitical priesthood. The high priest takes his office at age 30 and retires at age 50. Amen? Therefore, is it necessary for Jesus to start his ministry at age 30? Why? Because he's going to take his office of the high priest at age 30, thus fulfilling the law. Not breaking the law, fulfilling it. Did he abolish the law? But what did he do? He fulfilled it. What does fulfill mean? Satisfied at all the requirements of it? Did he do away with it? If he fulfilled it, but did he, is there, there now are we without law? Somebody said, well, under grace, then there's no law. You're under law, you're under grace. But Paul said, now there is a law unto us. It's a law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. A law of the spirit. It's the law of liberty, which we all will be judged by. Amen. So we're going to talk about before and after the cross. Here's the cross. There's the height, depth, length, and width of Christ. When you put the blood of the Paschal Lamb on the preparation the preparation, Jesus was crucified between the evenings. Why is this very important for between the evenings? Because the evening and the morning were the first day. Not the morning, but the evening and the morning was the first day. 
not the morning and the evening, evening and morning. Jesus was crucified between evening. So at the very time that he, the preparation where they kill the lamb between the evenings, they, they, they literally sacrifice that lamb. And then they eat it all night. When did Jesus die on the cross? What time? At the evening sacrifice at what? Three o'clock in the afternoon or what hour? Okay, when you, have, when you have being only the third hour of the day, what third in the book of Acts, what, what would the third hour be? The third hour. Jesus said, are there not 12 hours in a day? He said, no, Lord, you miss it. There's 24 hours a day. He said, are there not 12 hours in the day? And the evening and the morning were the first day. And, and, the, and you have the watches at night. At first watch, 9 to 12. Second watch, 12 to 3. Third watch, I mean, six, first watch, I'm sorry, 6 to 9. Second watch, 9 to 12. Third watch, 12 to 3. Fourth watch, 3 to 6. When does the Lord come walking upon the sea? In the fourth watch. When did he come in the first watch? Why did he let those disciples go through all of that, through four watches? Why didn't he just come with them and said, hey, you know, there's no reason for you guys to go through all this. He went to the mountain apart. He's praying for them. The sea comes to Moses. And then in the fourth watch, Jesus comes walking, walking upon the water in the fourth watch. Because we're going to go through, are we going to go through part of the night or all the night? When is a man child born? In the night. So what does that mean to us? Is the church just going to be la-la land and it's going to be all rosy-dozy and everything's going to be just great? Or during the time of great tribulation is the very time that this great work of God is going to be manifest in the earth? It'll be a time of great tribulation. It says, there never was a nation, neither shall ever be again. Pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Why on the Sabbath day? Because the Sabbath day is the seventh day. The Sabbath is the seventh day. The Sabbath is the seventh day, which is the seventh. And there remaineth the rest to the people of God in, in Hebrews 4. What is that? It's the eternal sabbatico. That's not just a Sabbath. That is a Sabbath of Sabbaths. It's the feast of feasts. It's the dip That's all, folks. Curtains. El Now, the fat lady has sang. Excuse me, I shouldn't have said that. The cross, they put a, kept a male of the first year, kept him up four days, four nights. Make sure he's without spot or blemish. And then put it upon the lentils and the doorpost. Here, 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 and here. The lentils and the doorpost. What did it make? A cross. So the Passover, now, on that 14th day of the first month, on the preparation, that is the day before you killed that Passover lamb, you roasted it all night, didn't you? All night. Well, evening and the morning. So Jesus dies at the evening sacrifice at 3 o'clock in the afternoon from 12 to 3. It's what? Total darkness. Why is it total darkness? Because he that knew no sin became sin. Was there any light shining anywhere in the universe? Why? Because sin is light or darkness. Darkness. And in Jesus, there's no darkness at all. Satan comes, has Jesus said, and has nothing in me. There was no sinful nature in Jesus. He was in the likeness of sinful flesh, but he did not have that Adamic nature. Adam was not his daddy. God was. So he wasn't baptized of John and Jordan to wash away his sins, were they? Was he born an unholy thing and had to be born again, or was he born a holy thing? That holy thing that is born of thee, Mary, is of the Holy Ghost. Say ye of him whom God has sanctified and sent into the world that I blaspheme because I say I'm the Son of God. How did God sanctify him and send him into the world? 
What does sanctify mean? Set apart. To be set apart. The anointed with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. What are the fellows? Your brethren. Fellows. He's a jolly good fellow. He's a jolly good fellow. All right, fellows. Your peers, your brethren. Which he's not ashamed to call us brethren because we're all born of one. Which he's not ashamed to call us brethren. Hebrews, second chapter. Now, Jesus there is crucified and dies when? At the evening sacrifice. So they put him on the cross in the morning sacrifice to sacrifice him. It's light until noon, high noon, when the sun ought to be shining the greatest. What happens? God turns the lights out. Even in Herod's temple where you had the seven golden candlesticks, all the lights went out there. Every light there was went out. Gross darkness covered the people. So great a darkness no one moved for three hours. We can hardly stand if electricity goes off. First thing you do is light a candle. They didn't have no candle light. Those matches wasn't burned then. There wasn't no light nowhere. No man flipped a Zippo lighter and said, hey. There was no coal oil lamp to light. Not even the colored candlesticks that they had a half egg of oil lit in the sanctuary, in the, holy of, in the holy place. No light was burning, not in any constellation anywhere in the cosmos. Because God turned the lights out. And he that knew no sin became sin. You mean our Savior became sin? Somebody said, I had one, one uh, cop stop me, highway patrol, way, way back there. I'd have only been in the ministry there a little over a year. He said, I have seen people taken out of cars with the jaws of life, rip guts, everything out, beheaded, and everything else. And you tell me that that man, Jesus on the cross, was, was literally, visage was marred more than any other man. He was still intact. The question then that you ask him is, why did God turn the lights out from 12 to 3? Because at that point, he who know no sin became sin. That person got decapitated in that car didn't become sin. And in that, when that sin, when that he became sin, who knew no sin, he became sin, who knew no sin, he became sin, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. He became sin. At that time, it said, in his death. He tasted death for who? Every man. And in Isaiah, it said, he shall see his seed when he makes his soul an offering for sin. Did he see you? Did he see every person ever born? The answer is yes. Now he died for what? Tasted death for some men? Only the church? All men? So that means from Adam all the way down, he died for the sin of the world. And then, then, they have a choice to either accept that gift or reject it. This is a true light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. What if God's made provision? You said, I don't want the gift. Does a gift have to be received? What if somebody gives you a gift, puts it under a Christmas tree there, and it sits there, and it'll sit there forever? You didn't receive it. It's there, but you didn't receive it. You've got to take it. The kingdom of God suffers violence. The violent take it by force. The Biblion, the little book is in the hand, and he take that book out of the right hand of him. And I took the book, the little book, and ate it all. It's sweet to my mouth and bitter in my stomach. Did you have to take it? Is God going to just drop it in the mailbox to you? And when you take it, then you're operating in faith. In faith. Faith requires what? 
obedience. What if I just say, well, I'm here. God, you want me to do something? You just let me know. Or do you have to search you out of the book and read? Do you have to search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and these are they testify to me? Does it require action on a part? Those that do hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Something that we have to do. What if we don't do it? Then we haven't received the gift of God. We didn't receive it. It's fair, but we didn't receive it, did we? How do we receive it? By faith. I'm going to open that present up. I'm going to tear that paper off. I'm going to jump that. I'm going to jerk that box open. I'm going to see what I got. Well, that's faith. If I didn't believe there was something in there, I wouldn't be doing all that. Well, God has bestowed upon us. Behold, what manner of love that God has bestowed upon us that we should now be called the sons of God. But it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know when we see him, we shall be as he is. Wow. That's a pretty good promise, isn't it? We're not talking about 70 years of life. I live 70 years for him, so I get 70 years. We're talking eternity here. How long is eternity? When it's a thousand, 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 trillion, billion, quadrillion years, we've just only begun. When you talk about eternity, that's a long, long, long time. So no matter what happens here for this little short 70 years, we are going to be held accountable to him if he said, I give you eternal life. We didn't receive it by faith, so what, what remains for us? If we don't accept the free gift, did God create health for us? Who was it created for the devil and his angels. So if we go there, we'll go there as a trespasser. It was never created for us because he made provision for us. But what if we do not accept the free gift by faith? Did God put us there? So when he chose that all the ungodly will be convinced of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed. But what if God says, look, I know it's impossible for you to live this in the flesh. I'm going to give you my spirit. You got a car out there, but it ain't got no motor in it. So I'm going to give you the car, but I'm going to put the motor in it. You're the car. He's the motor. And not only that, all you got to do is just believe, and it's going to start, and it's going to carry you through the whole journey. All you got to do, all you have to do is be there and obey. Obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice, yeah. But the Holy Ghost is given to them that what? That obey him. Well, wait a minute. I thought I already had the Holy Ghost. Well, we're be not drunk with wine, we're in his excess, but be you filled with the Spirit. That's a present imperfect tense. It means keep being filled. Well, how can I keep being filled with the Spirit of God? Anybody? Stay in the Word. Good. In my distress, I was enlarged. How did David say he was enlarged? In my distress, in my, in my persecution and tribulation. What was enlarged? Did he grow another inch whenever it happened? The inward man did. How do I know that that inward man's growing? Because I go through tribulation and persecution, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God that you might be accounted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. So in my distress, I was enlarged. Then what happened? He fills you again. So the more that you go through in tribulation and persecution, the inward man grows by faith. Why? Because faith overcomes. Overcomes what? Everything, the world, the devil, and your own flesh. So you're going to get hit with three things. You're going to get hit with the devil and his angels. You're going to get hit with the world, the spirit of the world. And you're going to get hit with your own desires of your flesh. Amen. And you have to overcome. Is there anything that trumps God, that's greater than God, that you can't overcome? Is there something down here we can't overcome? 